Welcome to Sword and Shield, the official podcast of the 960th Cyberspace Wing. Join us for insight, knowledge, mentorship, and some fun as we discuss relevant topics in and around our wing. Please understand that the views expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of the U.S. Air Force nor the Air Force Reserve, and no endorsement of any particular person or business is ever intended. Gladiators, welcome back to Sword Shield Podcast. I'm Colonel Rick Erich, the 960th Cyber Wing Commander. Today I'm joined by... Mass Sergeant Reagan Green, uh, the Inspector General Superintendent. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, sir. Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm really excited. Mm-hmm. We're gonna we're gonna have a conversation today about all things IG. Yep, looking forward to it. And so we got uh, Sergeant Green here is um, fairly new to the wing. You've been with us uh, pretty Almost close to a year. year. Yes, yeah. sir. Excellent. Yeah. So she comes with a ton of experience in the IG world, and we're really really glad to have her. And uh, she's been a huge help for us as we're on this journey of maturing the wing. Yep. Um. So uh, let's let's kick it off here with a um, little discussion about what the uh, 960th Cyberspace Wing IG shop is responsible for, and then um, we'll just let it go from there. Absolutely. So essentially, the IG, uh, we play a vital role in ensuring the readiness, uh, discipline, efficiency of the Air Force mission. However, our goal is to actually understand uh, have the individuals understand the people as well as the leadership uh, that they are the greatest asset to what we do. Um, So we're responsible for a bunch of different programs. Uh, The majority of uh, readiness, all readiness exercises, the commander inspection program, complaints resolution, um, fraud, waste and abuse, anything along those lines. Uh, So we're we're responsible for that here. So Um, you have a small shop. How many folks are on the IG team for us? Yeah, so we have myself, uh, Major Tim, who is the Director of Inspections. We have Miss Carolis Ford, who is the Exercise Planning Coordinator. And then uh, we have a new incoming troop on uh, December, uh, Tech Sergeant Chandler Walker, and he is coming with a vast amount of experience with uh, readiness and uh, exercises. So we're looking forward to having him on board. Yeah, I'm excited to have the full team on board and and unlock all the potential that that your team can bring to us. Yeah, I think it's uh, I spent, you know, it's been 26 years now. And and when I started my career, I remember as a lieutenant, hey, there's an inspection coming. The IG's coming back your truck up. I'm going to put all the stuff we don't want the IG team to see in your truck. You take it home. And then when the inspection's over, you bring it back to the office. Like we've evolved pretty significantly since then. Um, what have you seen in your transition and time about um, where we were then and kind of where we are now and the positives around that? Sure. So as you were saying, it's typically been a black hat, uh, white hat type of environment for the IG, or that's what it was perceived to be. Uh, so really what we're doing is focusing on uh, the education and training piece and under having the leadership, uh, the commanders, as well as all individuals understand that we're not here to be black hat, white hat so much, but we are here to provide that education and training and also help evolve the wing into understanding how they fit into that bigger picture and uh, really having the leadership as well as, again, the airmen understand how to embrace the red and what that means uh, by accepting and documenting risk, because we want to see that as the IG, that they are aware of undetected noncompliance and that the commanders are aware of and documenting that risk. And so I think you made a good point there, right? You said commanders and airmen, kind of the team. Um, so the new um, framework for these kind of inspections and documenting and um, known risk and unknown risk is really what we call the CCIP, right? The Commander's Inspection Program. Yes, sir. That it, that's a little bit different before because before I felt like the IG team was kind of like responsible for making it happen. We shifted the focus where it needs to be on the commander to give them the tools and the opportunities um, to do all those things we talked about. And then you're there really to IG teams here to help, right? Yes, sir. So we really provide the administrative overview of the commander inspection program. So ultimately it is the wing commander's program. Um, and, and he is uh, has the ability to in, enable and encourage his squadron commanders to be able to accept that program and really start their own programs at their own level and uh, hold, take that holistic approach. And then again, we're just here as the IG to do the oversight and provide that education, uh, the tools and the training necessary so that they can be successful in their position. 
positions and in their command, because obviously they're dealing with all sorts of things on the daily basis and um, scenarios, and you never know. Right. I think it's an opportunity to put kind of the framework around uh, the commander's problems to detect the compliance, non-compliance, and, and help them focus really where they need to focus on. And so we've got the four major graded areas and we, we kind of box those at times to help people focus and certain things go in certain areas. And then we address those very deliberately through a number of uh, methods and venues. Yep, absolutely. And that is uh, the, the larger picture is uh, relating those four MGAs or major graded areas, uh, how that overall syncs up with the wing commander's priorities and his overall strat plan and having uh, the commanders at their level, especially at the squadron level, understand how that relates uh, to uh, risk and data driven decisions and relating that to the big overall picture for the wing. Yeah, I think for a long time, I won't say a long time, but you know, the last several years, we've talked a lot about we need to make data driven decisions, right? It's really important to do that, but we've never really helped our commanders do that. Like, how do we how do we give them the tools to do that? Um, even myself spending time in command, I, I use that. Um, I kind of tried to figure it out on my own, but then when I became squadron commander and then we started the CCIP, it really kind of helped put it in focus for me. And I think we've moved um, significantly, you know, since the time you came on the team and we hired Major Tim. And we're at this point now where I feel really comfortable that we're getting to um, the end game of really giving the commanders tools to make decisions based on data. Absolutely. And I would agree with that. Um, starting off, there was a misconception that the self-assessment program for the commander was specifically concerning uh, the management internal control tool, so MICT. And uh, essentially, that is a way for the functionals to talk to the units and relay that message as a two-way communication back and forth. Uh, but it really doesn't grasp the concept of all risk and how they're making data-driven decisions. So there's a, a number of things that go into the self-assessment program with just that small a MICT portion being one of them. So it's really how they are uh, correlating and uh, understanding where their risk is all over the entire squadron and being able to make decisions based on understanding where their risks are so that they're prepared to uh, further execute their mission that way. And I think it's important too to talk about, we need to make sure that units and supervisors are, when we talk about taking risks, right, they should take risks that they're responsible for and not take risks for somebody else. So uh, a, a supervisor in the unit should not be taking risks. That's really a decision the commander makes. And then squadron commander shouldn't be making decisions. That's a group commander decision. Then all through the organization, and this kind of this implemented the right way can help put that in the frame of mind that folks know where their area responsibility is and then how they can um, apply that data and, and understand what their decision is. Yep, absolutely. And I think it's imperative to understand that as a collective service in the military, we absolutely don't have all the money and resources we need to be able to do our jobs and do them effectively. Uh, so really, it comes down to the commanders understanding what they can and can't do with the resources that they have. And that's what it comes down to is being able to document that risk and understand that sometimes the programs or the processes or the people aren't able to make things green uh, and, and they're not able to do that at the unit level. So really, when I talk about embracing the red, that's what it means by uh, documenting the resources uh, constraint and saying, here's what I can't do um, and here's what I need help with. And so that's the point that we're trying to get across is it's so much more than just one piece of the pie, for instance, McT. Yeah, I find it very helpful. Um it kind of forces the discussion about risk and you can talk about ways to mitigate it. And then if you can't, then it's pretty clear about where the decision lies. And then you just present that and say, here's what we can't do. Here's why this is the risk I'm unwilling to take. And then that fits into somebody else's box. And, and we're trying to do that with building the, the risk-based sampling strategy and um, give units a tools to tailor kind of what they need to look at, but yet have really a deliberate kind of process for them to to assess. Where have you seen the, um, you know, from, from, from my perspective, I feel comfortable with RBSS. Um, I think we probably aren't uh, to the point where we need to be all the units. Some units find it easier and, and some are struggling a little bit. So any thoughts there about how we can help or um, help them move from 
um, where they are now to where they need to be? Yeah, so that's a great point. Um, one of the things that I like to focus on again is uh, taking a look at what is their entire unit consist of with the programs and the processes? What does their unit doc and their uh, MET statement say or their mission essential task statement say? How are they effectively meeting that mission? Uh, where are all of their additional duties? And taking that into a collective purview and understanding uh, really where their programs and resources lie. And so that's really the start of our BSS is to understand uh, what that means for each of the squadrons. So uh, there has been some confusion in the past where uh, the RBSS is, again, only focused on that MCT portion, uh, but again, taking into that approach of all areas, uh, especially when it concerns the mission and meeting mission requirements of what they can and can't document and uh, really putting those programs that are so uh, crucial to the mission, first and foremost, and uh, then working into their schedule, all of the rest of the things that they have going for the rest of the year. So it's really a, uh, it's a marathon and definitely not a sprint. And so it does take time to understand what RBSS or risk-based sampling means, uh, but it's, we're definitely headed in the right direction from where we go. And the more we can stay consistent with our message as the IG office, uh, the better off we will be in helping them understand and where to find tools uh, in those educational um, trying to meet with the commanders and uh, as well as the people to provide those avenues of education and training for them. Yeah. You and your team have been really helpful to me. And I'll be honest, like I was overwhelmed. Like I knew we had the CCIP and I kind of understood it, but it was like, where do you start? Right. And kind of what's important. And so I kind of went back to the foundation of I was comfortable with McT. We start there. But then when you helped me understand that, hey, each one of these areas is a da is a data point. And then we use the the RBSS as maybe the collection point for all your your data and then think about that way, prioritize it. And then it became much clearer for me. And then the light bulb went off, just clicked for me. Yeah. It's funny you say that because I in my IG career, I refer to it as the IG light bulb with the <laughs> with the commanders. And so it takes some time and it's uh, one of those it's a staged process. So right when you start the process. Uh, there's a lot of pushback with, you know, do we have to do this? Is this something that's necessary? Is how important is this to the mission? And then constantly training and having them uh, get to that point of, okay, now it makes sense. And then I can refer to that their IG light bulb went off because it clicks and then they just get it. And uh, they, they have a running program and a process and a way to document the risk and resource constraints. Yeah, we did not have that discussion ahead of time. That just um, came up naturally here. And uh, yeah, I'm lucky to have you and the team here that I can lean on right away to help me for every question. Um, and I know not all the units necessarily have that level of expertise. Um, and so how has your interaction been with the units and and how can you and the team you know, help them continue to um, get closer to flipping that switch on and getting the light bulb to go on for them? Sure. And so that's also a great question because um, prior to COVID, I was asking myself, what can I do uh, to make this better for especially one of our biggest uh, challenges, which is the GSUs and having the units separated? And so it's hard because you have uh, that in-person relationship with um, the, the units here at the 960th Cyber Wing and JBSA, uh, but it's when you have the 860th and the separated units, I don't get that FaceTime. Um, so oddly enough, while COVID has been a less than ideal situation, it uh, definitely has allowed room for growth and because it has been challenging. And I say that because uh, we've had to find innovative ways to come up with inspections and um, coordination and facilitation. And I've actually appreciated some aspects, especially the teams in being able to hit the camera and have that live face uh, version with the GSUs. And so that is one of the things that we have taken to uh, a new level being able to coordinate and being able to not be there in person per se, but having that FaceTime, whether that's through Teams or through Skype or whatnot. So we've, I've actually appreciated it in that aspect. And um, I think it's vastly important to be able to have that face-to-face -face interaction so that they can see you and that they can uh, put a name to, to the voice that they hear briefing them every single week during sure. the staff meetings. And uh, so I, I look forward to implementing that technology and the innovativeness of this year and coming forward, um, going into our uh, calendar year 21. 
in working with the units. And hopefully, because of those collaboration tools that we found during COVID, we've been able to really create a hub site um, and share collaborative efforts from the IG office with the 860th as well as the 960th group. So we've got a lot of great things planned, a lot of great groups planned uh, through teams and uh, different meetings. So I, I look forward to continuing to work with the GSUs as well as the JBSA units. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, you know, sometimes we have a tendency to focus on all the negative things and, and, and the bad aspects of what's going on. But um, uh, again, military people, great minds, and we find ways to innovate, right? Be flexible and um, and find ways to get it done. And, and frankly, I was stressing about, okay, we got this UEI coming up. Like, how am I going to get the IG team here out to everywhere and give the units the time that they need? And do we have money for it and the travel and the wear and tear on you and the team, bodies going everywhere? It, it was just overwhelming. And so COVID hit and it's like, okay, now you've been able to deliberately address time with each unit, get that face time that's so important for them and you. And uh, I'm really excited. And, you know, I'm kind of like ready for this UEI. Like I'm excited to show people who who we are and what we're doing and how far we've come and, and show them all the great work we've done. And I don't, I don't view it as, um, you know, the, uh, you know, like I did 20 years ago, like trying to avoid and figure out how to hide stuff, you know, from the team, like, I'm proud of what we're doing here and let's show them and identify the things that we know we're not doing and we need help with. I think that's okay. Um, and so what, what, what are you thinking about as we prep for UEI and, and kind of what, what worries you and where we need to close any gaps? Sure. So great question. Uh, one of the things that we're focusing on now is uh, with the CSAF's new intent, General Brown, he had highlighted accelerating change or losing. And uh, right now we're really taking that initiative and intent into action with our IG office specifically. And so we're stop, uh, we are not going to continue doing things that don't make sense. And so utilizing our resources where we can and taking advantage of the opportunities, uh, not only that, um, these collaborative and innovative technologies ha have provided for us, um, but looking at how we can address cyber readiness. And because obviously we are in an atypical wing, uh, not being same as a regular Air Force. And so right now our big focus going into the June UEI is to really key in on how we can exercise our cyber mission and our readiness through our mission essential tasks. And really the focus of that is going to be through real, real world exercises and how we can collect credit for that. And I think that has been one of our biggest hurdles and will continue to be because uh, how do we exercise cyber? Uh, that's been kind of the longstanding question between ACC as well as the larger Air Force. And we're really uh, keying in on what we can do and what makes sense. Because if the lowest airman in the room is asking the question, does this make sense? Then it probably doesn't make sense to do that. And so really focusing on what we can do and um, heightening those abilities to take advantage of our cyber mission and what we can do defensively. Yeah, for sure. So I know the 688th just went through their, went through their UEI and we're going to kind of learn. And once we get the report and they've been really good partners of ours and helped us kind of understand this, they've, you know, it was, it was calming for me to understand and hear that they have some of the same challenges that we do and, and they're markedly different um, structurally and organizationally they are, but they're having the same struggles. And so, you know, I like the maturity what we talked about. We eventually we looked at, you know, setting what the strategy should be and our priorities as a wing, focus on the McT, and then we've moved to focusing on um, undetected compliance and the way we looked at AFIs and documenting that. And then our our data-driven decision-making process. And now we're evolving to all right, really it's about readiness and how we're doing that. And I think that um, we need to define readiness differently for cyber. And and I know you guys are gonna help us help us do that and and move along. What kind of things do we need the, the units to focus on and um, maybe specifically for for the UEI and um, how can they how can they use what they're doing real world mission day to day to help document um, how they do the job every day? Sure. So we've actually had the conversation here within the wing within the last couple of weeks on uh, myself with the OSF flight, as well as uh, the new UDM that just came on board on exactly what we're talking about right now. So 
uh, what the units are going to be focusing on is how are they exercising their mission essential tasks in their units and taking credit for those and then relaying that back up to the IG so that we can document and give them credit because they're doing it whether they realize it or not from an IG perspective on the daily, weekly, monthly, UTA, whatever it may be on that basis. And so uh, focusing on the mission ass assurance aspect of it, uh, the combat communication side of it, uh, C2 supporting the 16th Air Force and 10th Air Force as well. And so really keying in on uh, what the units are doing uh, in their units, uh, specific mi mission essential tasks to uh, document their readiness and how how ready they are for the mission. Um, and so we are going to be taking advantage of uh, exercising our cyber mets and taking that credit and really focusing on that. And I highly encourage all of the units to document that as well. Um, there'll be more coming out within the next few months of how we are uh, identifying our mission essential tasks throughout the wing and how we are going to be uh, exercising that as well as uh, a brand new con ops plan, which I am super excited about for the IG office. So it's going to be really exciting. We've got a lot going. Yeah, I'm excited too. And um, we're still in this crawl walk run and, and I don't know exactly where we are, but I feel like maybe we're not crawling anymore, but we are still going kind of through everything for, for the first time as an organization. And I think it's okay that we've um, to not eat the entire elephant in one bite, right? We've been kind of chipping away at here and it's, it's maybe you've kind of laid out, this is what the plan is, but I feel like it's been more of a natural evolution and in between phases, we've moved faster and slower than others based on where we are. And I think, that's okay. And I think we don't have it right yet. We don't have our Mets right. And, and we know that. So we just got to continue chipping away at it, work better and make sure that, um, you know, we're taking care of our airmen. We're giving people opportunities to um, improve, making the culture the right way so that they feel like they can improve and speak their mind. And we're taking care of people and we're giving people opportunity. And that's kind of what I think about all the time. And the IG shop is really there to help us move the ball forward. Yep, absolutely. And it's really come down to a trial and error period uh, because we're a brand new wing. 2018, uh, we stood up as a wing. So we're still trying to figure it out and what that looks like. So doing the best with what we've been provided with the resources, but also um, coming up with innovative approaches from the IG office, because I don't want to be just the standard, the norm. We're cyber. I mean, we are awesome. And so we need to be able to say, here's what we're doing that's different than the REGAF. And when the inspectors come in for the UEI, they can say, wow, this is this is something great. Uh, this is something to be shared across the entire Air Force. And so that's really my goal uh, to get us there. And it, it is in phases and it is a, a long approach to obviously what the end state goal is. So it is gonna be trial and error, especially with the GSUs and a majority of uh, working with leadership to get that figured out as well as our mission partners, collectively speaking. Um, so it's it's we've got a lot of things going and I, I really we're on the path to go outside of the box. And so I am looking forward to the UEI and I am excited to host the inspectors, to have them come in to show exactly what we do, um, especially with defensive cyber operations and our cyber system weapon uh, systems. And it's it's going to be great. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to just uh, kind of get a benchmark, right? Figure out where we are. We think we're doing pretty good. Um, I don't feel like I'm going to be surprised by anything. And so that's why I'm like, hey, let's get it. Let's get it done. And then we'll chart the path from there, what the next phase will be for us and how we move forward. So um, I really appreciate your time today. And, and we hope everybody listening um, found some things helpful. And um, it kind of shows that uh, um, I think the excitement about um, where we are and how we're growing this mission. So thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. Glad to be here and look forward to where we're going.